Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope. I am your host, West the Mingo, and today we have a sponsored preview for you from Time Lancers by Party Tales. Now, this wouldn't be the Quackalope channel if it didn't have some flavor text, and boy, does this one have some flavor text. This will tell you all about the game and some interesting backstory information. The history of Time Lancers. At the end of the 21st century, scientists used particle accelerators to create a new element called temporilium, commonly referred to as time gems. Time gems bend time and space and allow for time travel. However, the average human body is too fragile to withstand the quantum changes that occur during this process. At the beginning of the 22nd century, scientists successfully edited human DNA and produced a new species capable of surviving time travel called Homo temporis, referred to as the Temps. Once time travel became possible, political factions started fighting over control of the past in order to alter the future. The Time Wars saw millions of people killed and erased from human history as factions went back and changed the past. In 2040, Johannesburg, the New World Capital, banned any form of time travel and the controversial procedure that creates Temps. A new police force, the Time Enforcers, was established to aggressively hunt down any Temps that continued to time travel. A small group of Temps formed in an underground collective that has been growing for the 13 years since time travel was banned. They have become freelance mercenaries for the warring factions, changing the past for the highest bidder. They call themselves Time Lancers. There you go, there's some fun flavor text for you. So they just laid out the idea for you that in this game you are a mercenary and you are doing everything possible to capture events and time and change them towards the will of the people that have paid you the most money. How, how do you do that, you ask? Well, I'm glad you did. As you'll see, there's a board here in front of us. This board is the are all the locations that you as a time traveler and a time lancer can visit to gain resources. Now, throughout the game, you'll use resources to capture events. And when I mean capture events, it means take a, an, a card from one of these event areas and you're going to place it on your time uh, line here in front of you. So for instance, if I wanted to capture this particular event, I would then place it here on this timeline based in chronological order. And then I'd be able to take advantage of the information that is listed on this particular card. But as you're moving through, you're going to be gathering these different resources, things like video cameras, disguises, med packs, communication devices, uh, the weapons, and an attache case. Along with that, you'll have the ability to pick up locks, which will stop your uh, time events from flipping, which I'll explain in a moment. You also have these uh, upgrade slots so that you can move uh, and use your time pod here effectively without having to sacrifice all these uh, time gems, which were the things that they talked about that they had created to power this amazing time machine. So on your turn, you'll have the opportunity to, to move three different spaces. And when you go through these spaces, you'll be able to take advantage of the location's action. So if for instance here I would be going to the surveillance lab, I could pay three money to gain uh, two of these uh, video cameras. Then I could go here to this location, I could pay two and upgrade one of my time slots here in my time machine so that when I visited this location, instead of having to pay two blue gems, I would only have to pay one because one is an upgraded slot that's just always available and I don't have to pay for it anymore. And then lastly, I could come back here to the tailor and then I could purchase again using one money, purchase two different disguises. And hopefully in that amount of time, I will have amassed the information uh, that I need as long as the resources that I need. So on my next turn, I could potentially visit uh, the time machine here. And then once you're in the time machine, you can choose to activate any of these different locations on the board. Now this is a very unique, interesting system here where the placement of your person is the activation that you're going to take. If you happen to have a card underneath it, you can power that card as well because you have to activate the space. So if I were to say come here, I would then put my person here, I would use my two blue gems 
to pay for the activation of this particular space. I then take advantage of whatever this particular card says. Uh, let's use this one because it's a little more interesting. So this gift says that I would gain two additional blue gems. Fantastic, so I gain two blue gems here. And then I would be able to purchase uh, a repeat card from the, the deck area here that had an MA system on it. So uh, there's different ages throughout uh, history, obviously. So we have the modern age, which will be showcased by this M. Uh, we have the Middle Ages, which is the MA, and then we have Ancient Times, which would be the A. And everything here is listed in chronological order. You see this is 1898, 1904, and 49 BCE. So therefore, you will see that these things showcase in chronological order. But you may be saying to yourself, West, if I'm looking at this information, it says Modern Age, uh, Middle Ages, and Ancient. Yes, that is correct, because... This is how you purchase these actions. You can place these down any way that you like as long as you start with the oldest thing first and then you move your way uh, up through time uh, and bring yourself to more of the present time over here uh, on this right hand side of your board. Uh, and you'll be activating these different slots as we said by paying the cost. What is very interesting about this is that you'll see some of these say repeat and some of these say revise. Now a repeat action, if you envision yourself as a time lancer, you're going back in time, so you are repeating that particular time that happened in time. You're repeating that event that happened in time and you're capturing that event to be able to use it uh, to help you throughout the game. So that's why they say when you're taking one of these events, you're not actually taking it, you're capturing it so you can use its ability uh, for your gain throughout the system. If you uh, purchased a uh, or captured a revised event, that means you'll see at the bottom of this card, there's a location that says revise. So that means that you've gone back in time, you've taken a look at this event, you were like, nay, nay, we are going to do something different. So you revised the event just a smidge. You know, some of that, what is it they say if you, if you step on a butterfly uh, back in dinosaur times, you may completely wipe out an entire species because that's the butterfly effect. You have no idea what will happen for just changing one little thing. So they've revised this particular event, and now instead of this thing, when we activate it, giving us two diamonds at the top, two of these time gems, now it is going to give us two communication devices. So that is a very seriously different situation uh, that you could then use to your advantage. One of the really, really uh, interesting things about how this game plays is while you have three movements out on the main board, this is kind of our current city uh, in the real world timeline, uh, where you gather all these different resources, once you are inside your time machine, you have unlimited actions because you're in time. You're, you're, you're corporeal, but you're not actually temporal. So you're just kind of existing in this crazy time warp. So as long as you have the ability to pay for all of the actions that you need on the board, you could literally take an unlimited number of turns throughout here and be able to purchase uh, and do different things on this uh, particular board because this half of the board is all about purchasing uh, and capturing time cards, right? Event cards. On these three ones over here, allow you to do other things because this allows you to just individually flip an event. So you pay its cost and then you can turn something from revise to uh, repeat and that's fantastic. Uh, and that's just one individual event. You could also flip one city tile because these tiles here on the board are actually double sided. So as events uh, happen and become revised, it will change the way things locate and showcase on the board. So in this particular situation, I'm just gonna flip one of these events here, uh, which is very nice. But let's say I went back to this revised thing and I took this, uh, this Middle Ages event, yeah? Uh, instead of putting it down, I could put it anywhere I wanted as long as it followed the correct order, but instead of putting it down here on the repeat side, because it's the original action that happened in time, I'm gonna set it here to the revised uh, side. Now, what this does is that now I get advantage of this top section. However, everything that happened in the world after this chronological event must be flipped, as well as all blue uh, type uh, locations here on the main board because I have revised history of that particular uh, location. This one is a, uh, a science location here. So all of these blue science locations that, that have to deal with uh, scientific knowledge and technology, they're gonna be flipped over uh, as well as 
any blue events that I've captured on my board uh, or my timeline here will also be flipped to that revised side because I have revised all of history. Uh, also, interestingly enough, every other player that's playing with you who has blue cards, the science cards, and they happen after 904 in this particular uh, year, 904, will also have to flip their cards. Now, why is that significant? Well, as you can imagine, um, these cards do have an ability, like on this one here, it says pay one less uh, time gem for activations, which means I can literally just go to these three things over and over again and never have to pay any uh, time gems, which is fantastic. Uh, but that also uh, messes up another section of this game. The way that this game ends is that you do all four of these different things. So we would have two green revised events, uh, two repeat, i.e. normal facing red events, uh, two repeat slash normal facing uh, blue events, and have three yellow revised events. Once all of these things have happened, uh, you will then be putting them on them. So once you have the, the two revised green events, you'll put a gear on it. And if you manage to do all four of these and nothing has been messed up by other people revising, because every time someone revises, if it messes up your plan, you have to pull this off. Uh, but if you do that, then you end the game and then you'll go to the points section where you get different points for various things. Um, however, what messes this up for a lot of people is every time someone takes a revise action, it switches all your cards and now maybe the ones that you needed as repeat events are now revised events, so you end up not being able to do uh, most of these different events on the thing as you're going through because you're constantly getting things flipped around and uh, having those different actions happen, which definitely creates a, a, a lot of entertaining chaos on the board. Um, the other thing that I mentioned, once you place one of these downs, you do also get the money for capturing the event because, of course, you're a mercenary. Um, now, the other way that the game can end is if you fill up this entire time machine because your time machine has a, a total capacity, so it's not able to uh, hold onto every single time event that you'd like, but eventually you'll, you could potentially get a total of nine cards, which would fill up this entire event line, and that could also trigger the end of the game. Uh, and then at that point, you'll have an opportunity to score your uh, cards. Now, the interesting thing is there is something on this board, uh, which are these side jobs. Because you're a mercenary, and because the highest dollar counts, you're going to be doing these additional side jobs. And these side jobs could be very simple, they could be a little bit more difficult, they could also be uh, kind of uh, mediocre. Um, you could have a total of four of these different cards. Uh, like this one here says a pair of revised Middle Ages card in your captured events. So you'd have to have a pair of these MA cards that are on the revised side and for every pair of those you have you'll gain two uh, merits and merits are like victory points. Uh, this particular one here is just have a revised ancient social event. So any old yellow ancient social er, event that is on flip to the revised side would give you four merits. That's pretty impressive. Um, so you have four of those and you can gain additional points for those as well. Now, as you're playing through and eventually you get to the end of the game, those merits do matter. They definitely can give you some significant point values. Uh, also, you're uh, having the additional resources and things. Uh, that is very important to you. The key is you can only have a total of 10 resources at any point in time. So at the end of your turn, if you have more than 10 resources, you cannot uh, actually continue on. You have to discard down to a total of 10. Uh, but throughout the, the your turn, you may over and you, you may get more and get less than, especially if you're here in this temporal area as you're using events and paying for cards and whatnot. Um, that can definitely happen, but as long as you don't end your turn with more than 10, you are fine. Um, this game plays in uh, one to four players. There is a solo uh, mode available for it as well. It does play roughly an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, I think they say 45 minutes to, to an hour-ish. Um, I think that's relatively fair in that regard. Uh, we certainly seem to, to get that done for us as well. I think uh, our playthrough, the two times we did it, was somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour, which is, I think, what they t uh, technically say on the board. We played as two-player for the gameplays that I did, um, which also, I forgot to talk about, these uh, authority figures 
figures here. Now these guys, they're, if you play with just, when you play with four players, it does keep people from moving uh, so much throughout the board because you can move through a person and take the action that's there, but you can't stop and actually finish your turn on the place with someone else. You also cannot back up and go through and touch an area that you started. So like if you started here in the center, you can't ever come back to the center on your, uh, your three moves. You'll have to go to three other additional spaces and having all these people on the board can definitely uh, make the board feel nice and tight. Uh, if you have to, you also have to, sometimes you'll have to go through these guys and you'll have to pay a fine, basically, because they're they're just shaking you down. They're kind of like the cops shaking you down, making sure they're the enforcers. Uh, so you'll have to pay whatever the fine is showcasing in the prison. You'll bribe them basically either one credit or two. Uh, and they definitely create some social destruction and, and frustration because at the end of a round they will then move and they might move to your current location and you have to pay the bribe right away. That's just always fun. Um, so, there you go. That is Time Lancers uh, by Party Tale Games. Please do check out their Kickstarter, which will be available below. There should be a link down in the description. If you think this is something that might be interesting for you or for your party group, party group, if you think this is something that's good for you or for your game group, uh, you should have a one. This could be a game that would be for you. Please do check out that Kickstarter description uh, and uh, join them and see if it's something that's fun for you. Give them some love. Uh, otherwise, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Always carry a towel when you're time traveling. It's very important. I'm not sure why, but it's extremely important. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye.